Hey everyone, it's Peter with Archway Defense, and I'm here at JP Headquarters with Chris Oz and Nathan Payne. Uh, two amazing competitive shooters, but not just competitive shooters. Saz, you're not just a competitor, you also work full time in law enforcement, correct? Correct. Yep. Uh, just, Tell over, me more. Uh, just over 20 years now as a licensed police officer in Minnesota. Uh, I've been a fire instructor for 16, a SWAT team for 14, and uh, pretty much running running rifles throughout the entire time there. And a rock star all the way around. Yeah, that's, that's right. what I'm saying. And Nathan, same thing. You're you're in the competitive three gun circuits. Right. Um, so if you guys are following three gun, you'll see these faces out there. But also in your full time job is law enforcement. Correct. Yep. Um, nine years, uh, federal law enforcement. Uh, been a federal fire federal law enforcement firearms instructor for uh, since 2014. Okay. So, yep, a little bit of experience behind the trigger. Not 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 an instructor quite as long as Saz, but uh, I worked my way there. Nobody's as old as Saz. <laughs> It's a lot older than he looks. <laughs> so we're here today to talk about the uh, the JP Rifle Tier LE Rifle Program. And specifically, it's it's JP Rifles made for law enforcement. And if you're new to this, obviously check out jprifles.com. But today we have something kind of special, and that is 60 of these bad boys, the JP Tier 1s in SBR, are heading out to law enforcement to actually one of the largest uh, departments in the country. Pretty cool. So what I want to do is have a little conversation about this specific setup because 60 rifles going out to one department, it's a pretty big purchase. And we know these are uh, these are actually going to a SWAT team. So what, from your guys' experience, this type of a setup, you're familiar, you know JP, like the back of your hand, but this type of a, a tier one setup, what are some of the benefits that you guys are seeing with these SOTs? Uh, with, with this gun especially, I mean, with the, uh, the operating system, between the gas, the carrier, the sound captured spring, I mean, it's gonna be the smoothest running gun. You're not gonna have any of the cheese grater sound that you just racking that, that bolt carrier in that. I mean, it's gonna feel like butter going back and forth. It's not uh, not like the old, the old style of <laughs> yeah. Vietnam era F-16s. Yeah, before we start, we were talking about the first gun you were ever issued and you just get that like grinding rack and smokes coming off of yeah. it. Nothing like that, but you mentioned the gas block, right? So adjustable gas block, because we know these will be suppressed, which is a little bit different than the three gun community, but for SWAT and even federal law enforcement, we're seeing a huge push towards the suppressor market. What's the benefit um, on your comp gun that translates over to law enforcement for having that adjustable gas block, like on this tier one? Yeah, so an adjustable gas block on, on a rifle, of any length uh, definitely makes a difference in the shooter experience, right? Um, as far as you can mitigate recoil uh, or felt recoil, I should say, and you can get the gun to really tune and run exactly how you want it. Now, when you add, an, add a suppressor and you start talking about uh, back pressure and things like that, an adjustable gas block can can help you with opening the operating window and things like that, especially when you combine it with a variable mass operating system, uh, the bolt carrier with the extra weight on there. Uh, with this suppressor, you're going to follow up a lot more, and so having that extra mass is definitely going to help you fight through, help that bolt carrier cycle through um, extra following and stuff in the chamber that you, a regular mass bolt carrier is probably it might stop it. You know what I mean? You might run into some malfunctions where this is going to fight right through. Yeah, you so. bring up a really good point actually about kind of those follow-up shots and the recoil management, recoil mitigation of having a tuned system. Whereas in the competition side, which you guys know better than I do, the competition side that means your faster splits, faster transitions, all that other stuff. But on the street, for that active shooter, active threat, active terrorism, that's what these guys and gals are going up yep. against. That means the ability, heaven forbid they have to, to put rounds on somebody who deserves them. Correct. Uh, during that active yeah, shooter. Yeah, it's definitely going to help with um, site recovery and things that you, it'll help, especially when that stress level gets up and you're, you start getting that tunnel vision, right? The inverted U hypothesis, all the things goes goes with that. Um, it's one more thing you don't have to focus on. Correct. It just makes it a lot easier. So the the components are similar to the comp guns, right? But then there's a couple things. How many, not a whole lot of uh, three gunners would run this short of a setup with it. <laughs> no, no. No, what's the benefit? Um, and I know through all of our experiences, having this short of a setup going through a door, right, is is pretty beneficial. So on Saws, on your side of the house, for SWAT cops, why would they want such a short setup? Well, I mean, you already brought it up with, with going through the door. Um, the more guns you get through the door with more people, 
faster, uh, not only going to be more fluid, but it's going to be safer for everybody, but uh, inside of apartment buildings, inside of confined space like a bus or a train or... Those um, linear environments, Yeah, right? linear environments like that, uh, being able to, to move to get the rifle uh, up around things, not getting uh, muscle sagged and... Uh, and like I know your jurisdiction that you work in, we won't we won't say it, but there's there's a couple houses in there that are those post-war builds that are really tight hallways, and that's something a lot of people don't think about when they're starting to throw law enforcement gun together. Is the the structures are so unpredictable? Whether you're going through an apartment, like you said, a linear environment, or a post-war home, that those hallways are pretty tight. Yeah, we got a lot of not only our buildings, we have some of these houses where you have kind of a not a full second story, but just kind of a not a makeshift, but a very small uh, stairwell leading up to there. And you might have just, just one room or even in uh, some of these makeshift finished basements where walls are just kind of thrown up and you know getting around a, a really hard corner with that. It's gonna be a lot easier with, with a much shorter gun. Yeah, so the, the shorter the gun, lighter, especially if you're going through a large school or a large, uh, large area that sometimes you have to work in. Clearing, I know we've all done it, but clearing 100 doorways by the end of it, you're smoked. Yeah. So then, even just the weight, I'll give you this guy. Yep. The weight of having a package, uh, rifle package like that. What's the benefit of something like that for the for the that average SWAT cop? Well, first of all, it's just it, every time, and and Saz, you can definitely attest to this. Um, every time that you add something to your kit, it you might be like, well, this is only six ounces, right? But you add 24 sets of that six ounces, and pretty it starts to add up. So when you can cut when you can cut some weight. Um, when you can cut some some bulk too because that's the other thing is just even if you're not just using it just carrying it having it slung in front of you um, any extra length to that's going to get in the way of other things right um, and then when you are using it it's a lot easier to control especially going down a hallway you go coming up somebody comes out of the doorway it's you know it's a lot easier to control this than having it way out away from you especially Bear in mind that this these are built to hand, to to be run with suppressors. So yep. you're adding at least six inches to the end of this, right? So so every now if this is a 16 inch or 18 inch barrel, now it's become you know that much longer. So I mean, it's a broom inches. at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. And and so these are all things that JP took into account when they built these rifles. Um, and and to the point that you brought up as far as just just weight and and things like that, even just um, the regular. Uh, I shouldn't say regular, but a patrol officer having a rifle slung on them. This is going to be far more um, pleasant yeah. and sustainable to handle over a 8, 10, 12 hour shift than the heavier, longer 16 inch, uh, 18 inch barrels that you might run into. Actually, yeah, some of your SWAT call outs, those aren't 20 minute call outs. No, You're there no, for... they're especially, I mean, we're, they're not, the, the trend right now in the country is you know, we're, we're throttling back. It's not as dynamic where it's going to be a, probably a prolonged event. And uh, I know within, within the last year, we had one that went uh, 18 hours that we, you know, cycle guys in and out with six to eight hour yeah. uh, rotations. And we're going to be out there for a good amount of time. So any of the military guys watching, military guys and gals, if you've been deployed downrange or even training, you know, the weight of your kit running for a 12, 20 hour day can destroy you pretty quick. So those ounces equal pounds. Exactly. So it's really cool to see this type of a rifle package being uh, built by JP for, for that LE. Uh, trends around the country. So, you know, obviously we're, tr we're traveling the country doing those LE courses. Um, what are you guys seeing? Uh, or let's talk about what, what we're seeing on the LE side of the house for overall shift in rifle platforms. And with that, I know that's around here somewhere. So look really similar. But going into that nine mil pistol caliber car carbine or the actual GMR. So very similar lengths, weights, everything else. Um, what from actually both firearms instructors, what's the benefit of converting or even using a nine millimeter platform that has the same drive controls? Well, as in, in, the in one gun? aspect of it, you're only carrying, um, you know, one set of magazine or one magazine for both guns. Yep. Those run off of Glock magazines. If your department's running a Glock, right. now you have X amount of magazines on you that are corresponding, but that can be switched back and forth between um, both guns that you have uh, on your kit. So, and then now you have the same fire controls. Exactly. Uh, I know that like my department, we have basically transitioned away from the MP5s uh, as far as uh, 
the pistol caliber. We have not gone to those. Everyone's gone straight to uh, the, the 5.62.3 rifle. But now, you, if you were to want to have somebody with a sub gun, you could have the exact same operating system firing controls as their AR versus with the MP5, where the, the safety was going the opposite yep. direction. You had uh, to, you know, your bags are going in different. The manual drop. arms yeah. is dramatically yep. different. So you could get that uh, that patrol cop or maybe school resource officer who's working inside a school. Uh, heaven forbid, obviously, we've, we've seen enough of those active shooters, active threats inside of the school, but having that nine, nine mil platform uh, opposed to the 5.56. Also, let's be honest, we shoot a lot, ammo costs. For yeah, training costs. Yeah, nines. You can get nine for a significant a lot cheaper than uh, 223, so. Yeah, I, I would say that um, the nine millimeter carbine is a very shooter friendly weapon. Um, if you're not if you're not used to shooting a rifle or something like that, it's an excellent way to introduce somebody to the platform. Um, the other thing you that you talk right, about you. is ammo cost, um, and also even if you're not running a Glock as your duty weapon, um, and these do take Glock magazines, if you run a nine millimeter, nine mil nine millimeter to ten nine millimeter, right? So if you have to, you've got actually, you know you've got rounds that are that are cross compatible. Yeah, and a couple years back, nobody would have been discussed running out of ammo on an active shooter, active threat, active terrorism, but we know from San Bernardino attack that officers did run out. I mean, there were literally, there's a firefight in the streets where they're engaging multiple terrorists inside a vehicle, broad daylight, and they're actually running dry on ammo, yeah. which is pretty rare, Yeah, but but, but it is happening. Right, and it, but also you talk to, uh, you, talk, you know, you talk about like a budget for a law enforcement agency, um, whether it be it local, state, federal, uh, you often get discount from ammo with larger, larger, buy. larger bulk buys. Right. So if, if, if you're buying twice as much nine millimeter, you're probably saving a lot of money, right? right. Or, you know, same thing with the 223. Uh, but the other thing is with this, um, this easy to suppress, it's super quiet when you suppress it. You don't have to worry about ear pro and all that kind of thing. Um, and like I said before, it's very shooter friendly. Yep. So the, the overall trends that we're seeing is obviously shorter. I think we could all agree shorter. Um, and then even from, from, from our side of the house, seeing departments that have that buyer's remorse of going in, let's be honest, <laughs> remember the first guns you were ever issued in the oh, department? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, uh, we won't say any names, but they were pretty rough. Yeah. Uh, so to go into that buy right first time, and that's where a lot of the three gun, if you're in the three gun competitive shooting, you already know why you, why you go with uh, that more of a premium brand, but now law enforcement is finally catching up to that. I think that you bring up a good point. I think that law enforcement probably, even, not probably, definitely even more so than, than competition shooter, buying the gold standard and running the gold standard is the difference for me in a competition and for, you know, when we shoot competitions, the difference between maybe winning and losing. But in law enforcement, it could be the difference between living and dying. And so um, the gold standard, uh, all the components in there make that is just jumped to the top of the list, in my, in my opinion, as far as like uh, all the all the stuff you're going to want to run in, in a law enforcement rifle. Yeah, and the, the funniest thing is we were uh, doing these LE courses around the country. We, we have the pleasure of running some tier ones, tier twos, and tier threes. And when we put cops behind the tier one rifles, watching their eyes light up because they had no idea an AR could shoot like that. Well, Which, and it brings up that you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, right? like, exactly. I mean, yeah. And the problem being that once you do shoot it, then you're not going to want to go back. No, they, they, <laughs> never, they never want to hand it off right. at the end of the day. They're right. always like, I got to take this one home, yeah. right? The, uh, I think the adaptability of these for, you know, individual officers is, is fantastic as well, where, you know, with the, uh, with the rapid configuration handguards, you can mount Picatinny, you can mount uh, QD mounts for your slings. Yep. You can mount them anywhere on it where, you know, it was, we went from the, you know, the Vietnam era triangle <laughs> handguard where, you know, you didn't have much. And then we went to the, the, the quad rail. Quad rail, so it weighed like 12 uh, pounds yes. or so. Right, and then you hurt your hands. It destroyed, you ripped your hands right. apart. You got four spots that you could mount it where now, I mean, you could, you can move things basically yeah, because you have on the handguards. You so. have the the obviously top, and then the one eighties, your nineties, but then also forty fives going all the way yep. around. So I, yeah, I think the uh, the way to or the ability to configure this to fit each individual officer is, is fantastic. If you have somebody that uh, you know is has short arms, or in my case, really long arms, or whatever it may be, where.
before you were adapting yourself to the gun, where with yeah. this setup, you can adapt the gun to you a lot easier. And I want to bring up something because I just remembered this. The, uh, the the rigidity of this thing. Oh, it's ridiculous. So we were just <laughs> in, uh, just after SHOT Show, we were in South Dakota doing uh, training with 15 departments. And at the end of the course, it was snowing bitterly cold. One of the officers drove over one of the tear rifles with his Tahoe. Still works perfectly. No, uh, did deform the handguards, and you're going driving over on a frozen frozen ground. ground yeah, obviously, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> but having that kind of uh, solid handguard in a lower profile, I, I love that thing. Okay, I want to talk about a program that's pretty cool, especially from the law enforcement background. You guys can appreciate this. Uh, the We've Got Your Back program from JP Rifles. This to me, like this, tugs at heartstrings because it's pretty. It's pretty powerful from a law enforcement standpoint. Uh, and those of you who don't know, maybe haven't been in law enforcement, there's a there's a trend in law enforcement. So if somebody takes your gun, right? If you have to turn into your gun, you either retired or you got in trouble, right? For the most part. What most people don't might not know is an officer involved shooting, regardless uh, during the initial invest investigation, it, it's required to actually take that rifle or pistol that was used in that officer involved shooting for evidence. So that rifle is now taken from them, which there's a huge stigma with that in law enforcement. Now, JP found a solution and it's called the We've Got Your Back program. We've Got Your Back simply means that. So officers that purchased a JP rifle under the Individual Officer Purchase Program, uh, heaven forbid if that rifle was used in a, a law enforcement shooting, JP will send them a, a filler rifle. And I mean, you guys know, how long, how long do guns stay in inventory? During an officer involved, the last uh, the last one that, that my SWAT team had, the gun was there for 13 months because they wanted to hold on to it to see if there was going to be an appeals process or not. So, so it was uh, it was out of out of the operator's hand for yeah. just over a year. And on the Fed side, that might be years. <laughs> I, mean, I, I haven't had any experience with <laughs> not it, but it, it, yeah, it not could be. Um, so the the part of that is obviously if you're JP wanted to find a solution for those officers that are investing in that, that premium product like we've already talked about, to keep them safe, keep their neighborhood safe, keep the community safe. Uh, so heaven forbid they ever get in that officer involved, the We've Got Your Back is pretty cool. And that's tied in directly with the individual officer program, purchase program, which if you want more information on that, check out jprifles.com. A couple other things <laughs> in the links below. Uh, a couple other things, uh, well, the tier rifle program, right? Yeah, there's... Uh you can go in and, and kind of uh, find which we've been talking about tier one rifles today. Yep. Uh, there's, uh, if you don't maybe want to go exactly like this, uh, there's definitely some, some options or some yep. variations. That, because uh, some, some departments are looking for uh, that every patrol car and certain departments, this would be appropriate for every patrol car, but then there's, there's tiers for pricing. But what we've seen across the country, literally training from coast to coast, border to border, is a lot of departments are like, you know what, we never even got a quote from JP because we, we didn't yeah, think we could we afford it. We never even thought it was going to be um, a possibility. And now with, with the tier rifle programs, these are, by the way, these are only available, correct, at uh, department purchasing. It's not an individual officer purchase program. But uh, the pricing on it is ultra competitive. You guys know what these guns are going for on the civilian market, but more importantly, what the rest of law enforcement is paying for guns. So ultra competitive, tier one, two, and three, um, tier ones are rock stars. You could pro I think you guys could probably both place or win in a three gun with this. <laughs> it's fast enough. Oh yeah. It looks cool, man. Oh, I, it, I, looks, I, it looks, I mean, that's yeah, basically the only color I need on a rifle. That's perfect. <laughs> um, and then the other, the other program is the refer refurbished program. Uh, so, so have you ever used a refurbished program? See, I, well, I've, I've, uh, you're kind of on the I've, I've, well, I've refurbished plenty of rifles. You know, <laughs> I find a detent spring and I gotta build a new rifle. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you gotta build one. Uh, no, I, I think that that one's good, and that's that one's good for somebody who maybe their department doesn't want to fork over the money for brand new rifles. But like kind of what I talked about um, with the, the quad rail super heavy handguard, or even if you're still running. Uh, the, uh, the plastic clamshell, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. the plastic clamshell one. I mean, if you want to start with going to just the, the forearm on it, where now I can I can mount Picatinny in, in anything where I want to, that yeah. would be a good place to start because now we're not we're not putting the money out there to go with 
you know, brand new rifles across the board, but we're, we're making the one that I have much more usable for me and not, uh, not going for it. And more importantly, the approval process, we all know it, law enforcement, you know it, I'm right. <laughs> the approval process for buying new guns is dramatically different than buying accessories, right? I mean, right. Yeah, you can, can buy accessories and get those refurbished yeah, you can You can slide this, you know, slide a, yeah. this piece and, here, this piece here. And ultimately save taxpayers a lot of money. Right. If, the, if the actual receivers and everything else are good, you can just upgrade a couple components that might not be, might not be appropriate. Right. All that being said, I think uh, we can agree, probably the best thing to do, to do is go check out uh, jprifles.com. Also, all of social media at JP Rifles. If you have any questions, go ahead, click the links at the bottom, and uh, we'd like to see you out on the range.